Now that you know a bit more about how to solve quadratic equations, you can apply some of those same techniques into other nonlinear equations that might not look like a quadratic equation uh, you know, at first glance. So let's, let's take a look. Let's say you're given this guy and asked to solve for x. So here, I mean, this clearly is not a quadratic equation, but how would you actually solve for it? Because I mean, there's an x underneath the square root here and one not in the square root here. So it's not really obvious what you should do. Um, but one thing you can do is square both sides just to get rid of the square root. That's always uh, something that should come to mind whenever you see square root at least to uh, square both sides. So if you were to square the left-hand side, well, that'll just undo the squaring will undo the square root. So you just end up with x plus five on the left. And on the right, squaring the x just gives you x squared. So now you have this. So whenever you have a quadratic equation like this, unlike a linear equation where you're trying to basically get x by itself on one side, like if this was linear, your instinct might be to say, oh yeah, you gotta, uh, you know, bring uh, the x to the other, this five to the other side and bring the x squared here. Uh, that way all the x's are on one term and the uh, numbers are on the other term. But that's not what you do with quadratic equations. The best way to solve a quadratic equation, uh, if there is an x term and an x squared term, uh, then uh, the best thing to do is actually to bring everything, including the constant, on the same side. And uh, preferably, you know, where on the x where where the x squared is a positive thing. It might make it easier to factor. But here, what one thing we can do is we can just bring everything over to the right hand side. So zero equals x squared minus x minus five. And all of a sudden we now end up with an equation this is a quadratic equation, unlike this guy, but squaring both sides and simplifying. Now, this is just like those problems where we had to find the solution of a quadratic equation. So we can either try to factor uh, the right, or if it's not possible to factor it, we can, um, uh, we can use a quadratic formula. So in either case, using the, you know, in, in either case, the point is you can use a quadratic formula. I won't go through it here because we've, uh, We've done those problems, but essentially you use a quadratic formula, you find the x's. The one other thing you have to do though is then you have to sort of go back and plug it into the original to make sure it still checks out. Because let's say you end up, you know, this quadratic equation might have a solution that involves like x being some negative number. Let's say, uh, you know, that you get x equals negative seven. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's a solution because when you actually plug a negative seven back to the original, even though it might work here, uh, if you plug it into the original, negative seven plus five would be negative two, and it's illegal to have a, a negative under a square root. So if you did get that, that means that this negative seven is what we call an extraneous solution. And so even though it works for part of uh, your problem onwards, it doesn't actually work for the original version of the question, and so it's not an overall solution. So that's just the overall process uh, for how you would do something like that. Uh, let's say you have a problem like this, this, uh, this fraction over here. So here, if we wanted to solve for P, uh, we could multiply both sides by the denominator here and get negative three P equals P and then times, so we're multiplying both sides by P plus two. That's really what we're doing. That's why we got rid of it here and we just multiplied it here. And that's why uh, it can distribute on the right. So p times p is p squared plus p times 2 is 2p. And then here you have negative 3p. And so, uh, yeah, and now again, just like with any, uh, any quadratic, we want to keep everything on the same side. So we can now add 3p to both sides. So we get p squared plus, uh, we have 2p plus another 3p, which would give us 5p. Now to solve for this, you could certainly use a quadratic formula that would get you the answer, but alternatively, you can factor. It might look like you can't factor because there's not that constant term, but it actually is easier to factor this way because you could literally just factor out a p. So you get zero equals p times, and then what are you left with? You're left with the p plus five. And again, you can always distribute it out to be confident. p times p is p squared, and then p times is five is five p you know that you factored it correctly. Once you have it down to this, now it's easy enough because the only way this product of these two is zero 
is either if this first guy p is equal to zero or and or the second guy p plus five is zero. So we break this down into p equals zero or p plus five is zero. Subtract five from both sides and so p equals negative five or p equals zero. So those would be our two solutions. And again, you can go back into the original, plug it in to see if it works. Uh, and yeah, zero does work, right? Because p plus zero plus two on the bottom is two and negative three times zero is zero. So in either case, you get zero on the left and zero on the right, so that works. And then negative five, we should again just check that as well. So if we were to plug in negative uh, five in for, let's see, in for our original thing here, we'd get negative three times negative five over p is negative five plus two. So that simplifies to give us on the top positive 15, and on the bottom, negative five plus two is gonna give us negative three. So overall, that's negative five. So the left-hand side is negative five. The right-hand side is P, which was negative five. So there you go, negative five equals negative five. So that's true. So neither of those were extraneous, so we're good. So that, that's, again, the overall process for, for applying these quadratic formulas and uh, factoring and all that stuff into other nonlinear looking scenarios. Finally, let's look at an example like this. Um, so again, this looks like it can get really complicated, like, oh man, you gotta add fractions and uh, you gotta give them a common denominator. And you certainly can do it that way. And you'd, you'd get, again, get the right answer that way too. Um, uh, another thing you could do just looking at this is you could multiply both sides of the equation by Q squared. So what would that do? Well, that would basically get rid of all the denominators. So let's first, let's do that. Let's multiply both sides by, uh, and again, if that doesn't occur to you, uh, first of all, the more problems you do, the more it'll start eventually occurring to you once you see a pattern. But even if it just maybe occurred to you, I'm gonna multiply both sides by Q, you can start there, and then you'll, you'll notice, oh, I can multiply by Q again, and it'll still simplify, and that's the same thing as multiplying by Q squared. But well, let's just, uh, to save some time here, multiply both sides by q squared. So the left-hand side is pretty easy. Eight times q squared, so again, q squared multiplied to the left, and q squared multiplied on the right. So the left is just gonna be eight q squared. And on the right, it distributes, right? So the q squared times this first term, the q on the bottom will cancel with one out of the two q's on top, because the top q squared is q times q, right? So one of them will cancel with the bottom, so you're just left with one of the q's. And here, 40 over q squared, the, the q squared just cancels completely, so you're just left with the number 40. And uh, yeah, so now you could even, if you want, at this point, divide both sides of the equation. You might notice that eight, the number eight factors, so you could just divide, uh, if you factor out an eight here on the, right hand side you're left with 2q plus 5 right because you could again just verify 8 times 2 that's 16q 8 times 5 that's 40 so and again on the left you have 8q squared so again if you divide now by 8 to both sides you can just cancel the 8s and you have q squared equals 2q plus 5 and again if you didn't do that step you'd still get the right answer you might just have bigger numbers and then you have to simplify at the end so it really doesn't matter so now again, here a lot of people instinctively will try to just put this on the other side and get Qs by itself. But again, that only works for linear equations or for quadratic equations where it doesn't have the uh, Q, you know, the X term, just the X squared term. But in either case, for a full-fledged quadratic equation, the best way to do it is to put everything on one side. So we're going to just subtract this from both sides. So we get Q squared minus 2Q minus five equals zero, and there you have it. Now, this is a regular old quadratic, and we could just use the quadratic formula if we can't factor it. Uh, and again, the quadratic formula where a is one, b is negative two, c is negative five, and from, from this point, it's just a procedure. You just plug it into that thing, you get a number, do the algebra careful. You could even plug it into a calculator, depending on the context, and then you'd immediately get a number. But yeah, that's how you solve it and again go back to the original make sure that no solution is extraneous and that's how you can solve that problem